Any surprises up to this point? Well, this is the worst Christmas morning ever. I don't get any like yeah. presents. Well, you're handing out all the gifts. I gotta. You, everybody wakes me up at five a.m. and says, "Go to work." Sorry, it's a terrible Christmas morning. Uh, um, no, look, no surprises yet. Every when things are going as planned and you don't have any surprises, that's often a good thing. Uh, they've got what six commitments in or signees in, I should say, clarify uh, with how we're you know where we're at right now speaking, but. Uh, they're also holding a lot of the guys they've already got in uh, for when they do their announcements. So uh, we'll have two big ones coming up on ESPN uh, in their block of signing day coverage. Uh, three of them, really, Philip Webb, Marcus Dumerville, uh, Jordan Birch. Those are the guys we're really watching today when you want to talk about uncommitted guys and uh, possibilities of them landing in LSU. So LSU seems to be sitting in a good spot with, with Dumerville and Webb. What's going on with Jordan Birch, who's the number one defensive end out of South Carolina? Yeah, I mean, I think that Doomerville and Webb are both looking like they're going to end up at LSU and, boy, at, at positions of real need and, and that are a premium. An offensive tackle, a guy who can play left tackle in Doomerville, and an edge rusher in Phillip Webb. And uh, and I think right now, you saw with the LSU team this year, uh, you need an offensive lineman who can block for your quarterback who's going to sit back there and throw it. And uh, if you're up in some of these games um, and other teams are having to throw it more and more, uh, A, you need to get more uh, players like, uh, the son of the guy sitting next to you guys, uh, Derek Stingley, and B, you want guys who can get after the quarterback and not give him any time to throw it, uh, and that's what Philip Webb brings. Jordan Birch, obviously a five-star D end, uh, the top uncommitted uh, prospect in the country who's going to be announcing today, has done an unbelievable job, he and his mother, of keeping everyone in the dark, and even college coaches to an extent, and I don't mean it as some negative uh, trolling the recruiting process type thing. He's just said from the start, look, me and my mom are going to make the decision. We're not really worried about the media or, or even college coaches all knowing exactly every move we're making. Uh, they've been very kind of pointed through the process of uh, let's go see this school, this school, uh, and we'll see where it goes from there. But we're talking about a kid in Columbia, South Carolina. So, I mean, his mom works on campus at USC. He's um, buddies with plenty of guys on the team. I mean, it's like any Baton Rouge kid uh, who spends a lot of time around LSU, but we've seen that go for LSU and against LSU, but LSU's never been 4-8. and eight. So uh, I think people are saying, if Jordan Birch is wanting to play for a contender, don't you leave home. Is that what's going to happen here? Everybody said, yeah, sure, he's going to go to Clemson. Well, he hasn't visited Clemson since July. I mean, if you're going to sign with Clemson, you would have thought certainly you would have gone to a game or swung in for a visit or something. He never did it. So that leaves me wondering, LSU, Bama, Georgia, those are the teams we're watching. All of them probably have different reasons to feel a little confident about things. Uh, but LSU's right here in the mix. They were once considered a dark horse, guys, but uh, there is no doubt that after 13-0 and and the visit he's made and the visit he took to Bama was uh, for the game when LSU won in Tuscaloosa, there's reasons to believe he could pick LSU. Uh, we'll see how things play out. Wow. Shay Dixon joining us here from Go247. Uh, you can follow his coverage all day long, following him on Twitter at Shay Dixon with anything that pops as far as recruiting coverage goes. Elias Rick sent his letter of intent in. A year ago, LSU picked up the number one cornerback in the country and Derek Singley Jr. Uh, how does Ricks compare, or what does he bring into this class? I mean, I think that, I don't want to put it on a kid to say that he can live up to what Derek's done. And I'm not just saying that because I like yeah. his dad and he, he's on the radio with you guys, but up, Shay? Real. I, I mean, <laughs> hey, yeah, right. You can put the check in the mail. You're welcome. Uh, I, will. <laughs> I, th I think that it, that's high praise. I mean, Derek was the highest ranked cornerback we've ever had at 24 seven. So I think with Rick's, you want him to come in uh, and really soak up, you know, what he can learn from, that room. I know Christian Fulton will be gone, but uh, between Derek Stingley, Cordell Flott, Jay Ward, a guy I like, Ray Darius Jones, we'll see if he can make that leap this offseason. They've got some good young cornerbacks who've got experience this year, uh, and that's what Ricks needs to do. He went from modern day to IMG. He's played big time football before uh, at the high school level, but uh, you want to bring him in as an early enrollee, put him around those guys, put him in a room with Corey Raymond, who's as good as it gets when it comes to developing cornerbacks and certainly getting young guys ready to play and then see what he can bring you next year. And, and look, I think that you'll enter next year, obviously Fulton's going pro and Stingley will be your 
uh, you know, number one corner, but um, Blot, Ward, those guys will all battle it out for that number two spot. And you try to bring a guy like Elias Ricks along, much like you did with, with those guys this year, you know, giving them a start or two here and there, but more importantly, just kind of getting them into some games and, and letting them get the feel for things. Eric Gilbert was on with us in our number one highest rated tight end you guys have had in the service. Uh, he was the Gatorade National Player of the Year. Over 100 catches, 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns from that position. Um, they've got playmakers in this class. Tell me what you think about re- with Rakeem Jarrett and, and Jermaine Burton and what happens with those, those two guys' recruitment. Yeah, I mean, I, first off, Gilbert is the absolute real deal. I mean, he's going to play a lot of football for LSU next year. He's probably one of the – he is one of the best tight ends we've ever seen come through yeah. recruiting in the modern era, and he's coming because they had this offense. I mean, four months ago we would have never said – no, he would have never said – no recruit gets up there and says, I'm going to LSU because they throw the ball more than anyone and they love throwing it to their tight ends. Like <laughs> it wasn't a thing we talked about. That's nuts. <laughs> um, so kudos to LSU for being able – and John DeCoster – uh, tight ends coach for being able to pull that off. But look, they've had Rakeem Jarrett and Jermaine Burton committed as a California kid and a, a Washington DC kid for a long time. Uh, Jarrett, even before the season, they both committed. So they were promised this offense and then they saw it uh, actually, you know, play out in front of them. I think that was big and holding on to them. Jarrett's not going to do anything today. He's going to wait it out till February signed in. I think it'll be worth tracking. I'm not ready to guarantee that he's going to ink with the Tigers. And Burton today is one we're really watching because George has been in his ear. Uh, and look, I, I think right now the Georgia offensive staff is fighting a lot of what the LSU offensive staff has fought in the past about a pro-style offense where you're not putting it downfield and your receivers are kind of just blocking a lot. Uh, and meanwhile, in Baton Rouge, you've got uh, multiple guys over 1,000 yards, three receivers, all three starters at double-digit touchdowns moving into the playoffs. Um, so there's reason to believe that uh, Burton you know, would lean towards LSU, but uh, his mom's moving back to Georgia. Uh, being close to family is something that's important to a lot of recruits. Uh, and I think you're looking at a situation where LSU is just trying to hold on a little bit longer today. Uh, and if they can go ahead and get him uh, to ink uh, this morning, he'll be out in California, so he's a bit behind us. But uh, they'd feel like that's a massive win, almost like landing a new commitment. Uh, just because they've had to battle down the stretch. I think he sticks, but uh, nothing is obviously um, solid in recruiting until you you sign that letter and and send it through to compliance. Any more quarterbacks in this class? I know Finley's in, and and Max Johnson has already signed his letter of intent. Anything else to watch for at that position? No, that's about it. I think if you want to just talk quarterback, people are watching Bryce Young, who's been committed to Bama forever as the top quarterback in the class. With the Graham Harrell news at USC yesterday, does an L.A. kid think about staying home? I don't have much info there, but I know it's getting spread around that that's one that, that everybody are kind of watching today. LSU's good with their two. They've got Max Johnson and TJ in, as you mentioned, and they're hoping this year, guys, has catapulted them to that next level of quarterback recruiting in 2021 for guys like Caleb Williams, who's on the East Coast as the number one dual-threat quarterback in the country uh, and has been given LSU a pretty serious look now that he's seen um, you know, what Innsbinger and Joe Brady and, and this offense have been able to do. Shay, what's up, man? Coach Stingley. Um, question, do you know if we're going with all 25, not necessarily in for December, but through February, or, or would they hold a couple of spots open for some transfers or JUCO guys? That's right. Yeah, you're going to take these guys' jobs here if we're not careful. They've got the good <laughs> questions. Uh, I think that's probably, Coach, the most, interesting thing I'm watching because they're going to have high school guys they can get and not even warm bodies. If you want to call it that, I know people kind of often say, well, don't just take a guy to take a guy. And I don't think they'll be in that position, but I think they'll move through the early signing period. So this week with let's say 20, 21, 22 signees. uh, And then you get into the back end and you've got a few spots to play with and they've got some big targets out there and Rakeem Jarrett and Cameron Jackson, a couple current commits that won't sign until then. But, if you don't get Zach Evans or a running back, do you need one? Because you know Clyde's probably going pro. Uh, if you don't get another high school guy you love, I know they've got three, but we're in the you know the era of the transfer portal right now, and LSU's never going through a season with two scholarship running backs. And quarterback will get tossed around, and I think largely because of what Joe Burrow has been able to do. I'm on record. I'm a Miles Brennan fan, but uh, look, I'm not paid to make those decisions, and my job ain't on the line either way. So. 
Uh, we could see if they try to entertain anything with, you know, quarterbacks who could come uh, out of the transfer portal. So I think once they get through this next few days and they see, hey, what are our needs and how many spots do we still have? Uh, I think we'll find some clarity in, in whether or not they save anything for a transfer once we get into the month of January. Shay Dixon, go247.com is where you can find him online, keeping up with the news all day or on Twitter at Shay Dixon to follow what is uh, happening with this LSU 2020 class as the letters of intent are starting to roll in. And here in the next 30 minutes or uh, at 11 o'clock this morning, things could start to get interesting as the first of three national recruits. Marcus Dumerville is set to make his announcement um, and Philip Webb and Jordan Birch to follow. All will have LSU hats on the table, and Shea will have the information for you. Thanks for jumping on, man. I know it's busy. Merry Christmas.